this time of year, the uh, common heat-related illnesses are essentially three. Heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Heat uh, cramps, people would experience large muscle cramps, cramping of their shoulders, their thighs, and their coughs. Um, and, it, and it would progress if, if untreated. Uh, at the same time, during this uh, heat uh, cramp phase, um, they become a little bit dehydrated. More severe is heat exhaustion. Uh, when people begin to experience heat exhaustion, in addition to the muscle cramps, they may become lightheaded, uh, develop nausea and vomiting, and uh, not look quite right. For heat stroke, uh, at that point, in addition to having nausea, vomiting, cramping, and so forth, uh, the person develops an elevated body temperature. Uh, most alarmingly, they may uh, stop sweating completely uh, and be dry and uh, undergo neurologic changes. They may start to hallucinate, uh, either uh, hear voices or not be reacting to what's going on around them and become dangerous in whatever they're doing. In that case, you'd certainly want to call 911. Uh, now, if you're a ways from help, uh, you may need to start treatment yourself. If you know that's happening, it's most important to uh, discontinue what you're doing and uh, get to a cooler environment, dial down the level of your activity, and rehydrate yourself. Uh, the warning signals, however, is when uh, you start to not look well to the people around you. And in the worst case, uh, heat stroke, you might not even be aware you're going through this and then you're re relying on the other people to get you to the, uh, to the emergency department. So one of the important things in really preventing things from, uh, from reaching heat stroke uh, is, is being safe. And, and the way to be safe is when the weather changes, it takes your body about uh, 10 days to acclimatize. So to really limit uh, vigorous uh, physical activity such as athletic training or you know, if you're a guy that works outside as a contractor, cut back your hours a little bit until you're used to the weather. Um, the other risky thing is to avoid the, uh, the heat of the day. And in the summer, that's that uh, 2 p.m. to uh, 5 p.m. block. Uh, additionally, uh, you wanna stay well hydrated uh, and that's not just with water. If you only replace your, uh, your body losses with water, you lose your electrolyte balance and your potassium can go low and your sodium can go low and cause a lot of other complications. So the commercial sports drinks like Gatorade are pretty good for that. You want to protect uh, yourself from the sun, which uh, damages your ability to, to get rid of heat by radiation. And lastly, um, if you're far from help, there's some things you could do to save the person's life if they've gone into heat stroke and started hallucinating. If you have enough people, you can uh, immerse that person in water as long as you can control their head and make sure that uh, they don't lose their ability to breathe. Uh, you don't want to put them in ice cold water where you can precipitate shock. Uh, but the most effective would be to get them to the emergency department where we uh, spray them with a mist and use fans to cool them and allow the, the body heat to be evaporated. Folks, whether they're in uh, sports, uh, the military, or even on the job, uh, nobody wants to be the first person to go inside or stop. So it's to watch out for each other and for uh, whoever's in charge to have a, uh, enough common sense to say, hey, this is too much for the day and uh, get the people out of that environment. Because uh, the, the most dangerous thing for heat stroke is the people most at risk lose their awareness that they're uh, having heat stroke.